and what I'm going to do today is um, is go over all of the uh, parameters for, for our, our algorithmic auto trader to uh, to trigger a trade. I'm going to show you the trade results. Um, what we do is every three months um, we do a uh, we do a reanalysis of market movement, uh, volatility. Uh, we um, and we upgrade it, and I think that's one of the reasons why it's been it, it's been doing as, as uh, remarkably well as it has. And what I'll do at the end uh, at the end of the discussion, I'll answer any questions that you have. So you know I have to start out um, by telling you that you know this is the, the the information that I'm providing you is for educational purposes only, and that um, you know that we are not. Uh, certified uh, trading advisors um, and be sure you know never to risk more than two percent of your account in any trade um, do your own due diligence and consult consult a financial advisor prior to making any trading decisions and uh, past results or don't necessarily predict the way things are going to go out into the future so that said let's let's um, go ahead with the uh, with the presentation now, just a little bit about myself. I mean, a lot of you have probably heard me talk before. I'm a graduate of the University of Pennsylvania, former, former professor. Uh, I've been involved in the, in the financial markets for over 20 years. Um, and I began trading a long time ago. And what we do here at Right Line Trading is we look at every uh, financial instrument as a closed system. Um, we define certain independent variables that are responsible for the future movement of price. And then we we, uh, we take those independent variables, put them in a multivariable equation, and we optimize them. And that's really how we got our, our software system and how uh, we um, have developed our, our automated algorithmic trader. Now, we all know about the problem with current technical analysis, and I'm not going to go into this too much, but 95% of day traders fail. Uh, I think a, a significant amount of it is, 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 um, is simply due to lack of discipline. But also, the, uh, it's like current technical analysis simply does not work. And the, the number doesn't improve over time because the, 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 there's no evolutionary improvement in, in, in technical analysis. What we do is we still use the same uh, indicator systems and the same basic current technical analysis that we used 20 years ago. And every generation of day trader fares, fails to learn from the previous generation. They accept current dogma without mathematical verification. And there's very, very few academic institutions. In fact, there's none that I know of. Uh, that look upon day trading and swing trading as a science. If you if you go to a university, and a you know a huge uh, school of business, there's no there's no division of trading, or the, or there's nobody really doing scientific analysis of, of indicators. So it's it's really a neglected area, and, it, and and I think a lot of people consider it to be more of an art than a science. And so simple so simply the there's very there's real, very little forward movement on the scientific front regarding how we trade the markets and although we do have new new things like market profile and volume profile and volume analysis um, order flow analysis and order flow tracking um, we, we we really still uh, don't have any hard numbers as to how as to what the sensitivity specificity positive predictive value or, or, uh, of any of those things are because they've really never been looked at really rigorously in, on a scientific level. But what we've defined are independent variables that do have a tremendous say in how the market or price on that given market is going to move out into the future. And I think the most important is the multi-time frame analysis of trend. Um, the multi-time frame analysis of correlative markets is the most direct assessment of money flow that I think that there is. And a, a lot of software says that they can track money flow, but I'll show you how we do it. And, and, and it is very powerful. Now, the multi-time frame analysis of order flow, I'm, I'm going to show you also. 
We look at the multi time frame analysis of momentum and market profile. All these things and more have to align before the auto trader will trigger a trade. And I'm going to show you live auto trader tr trades um, that were taken today. Uh, what we ignore is the oscillators, MACD, Fibonacci does not work. I'm not going to go into a, a whole big thing about it. But he was an 11th century mathematician and um, it was essentially 800 years later that the financial markets were developed and transposing his numbers into the financial markets and making the decision that somehow they are going to predict where price is going to move out into the future is, is on, the, on the face of it fairly absurd. Um, at least Elliott Wave created his, his five-way pattern based on what he thought he saw in the market. Uh, and I've read a lot of Elliott books on Elliott Wave. I don't know anyone who can trade Elliott Wave uh, profitably. So here's the first two things that the auto trader looks for. It looks for the multi-time frame assessment of momentum and the multi-time frame assessment of order flow to be in the direction of the trade. Now, what the multi-time frame assessment of momentum is, it looks at the two higher time frames in your trading chart. So let's say you're trading a three minute, it's gonna look at your nine minute and your 27 minute. And it does that inside um, its own algorithm. You don't have to project a nine minute or a 27 minute, it does it on its own. Um, if you're trading a five range, it looks at the two higher FIB numbers, and there is a lot of symmetry in Fibonacci, although it certainly does not predict the future movement of price in a financial instrument. It works real well when you're, when you're looking at higher time frames, and you have to look at um, uh, when you're trading a tick chart. You trade a 377 tick, your two higher time frames are your 610, and then your next higher FIB number. I just can't remember what it is. So the analysis is based solely on the two higher time frames, not on anything that's occurring on your trading chart. And order flow is simply looking at the delta of your two higher time frames, i.e. on each given candle, is there, are there excess buyers or are, or are there excess sellers? And each candle provides you with a delta and what we do is we put the delta into a moving average and create a delta moving average. So there's got to be a smooth delta moving average showing you that there's an excess of sellers on the, on the dome, on the two higher time frames, before the auto trader will trigger a trade. And obviously you have to have alignment on the trade. And just to give you some examples, here's where order flow and momentum on a multi-time frame basis align. Now these are not auto trader trades because we're not looking at all the independent variables, we're just looking at two of them. But when they do align, price is almost always going to rise on your trading chart. And this is one of the principles we use when we trade uh, every morning on a discretionary basis. We look for these two variables to be aligned in the direction we want to trade. Everybody who tries to trade in the counter trend direction is almost always going to get run over. Here's the same thing. Now really the time frame or the trading instrument is really irrelevant because these principles are time frame independent and they're instrument independent. Now the auto trader um, we're, we're going to go into the specifics of the auto trader, trades a specific time frame in specific markets. But when order flow and momentum are aligned, it's only looking for a long entry because that's, direct, that's the direction that price is going to move on your trading chart. Now, it also looks for when there is a disparity, when order flow in, in, this, in this particular case, is looking to go long. It's a long force on price, and momentum 
is a short force on price. Now, all of us wonder why the market chops. And the reason the market chops is when all these independent variables don't align. And if each of them have equal say in how price is going to move out into the future, and they all don't align in the upside or to the upside or the downside, then that's when price chops. So the auto trader almost never, in fact, it never takes a, a trade in a chop market, at least so far as defined by the direction of order flow and the direction of momentum on a multi-time frame basis. It's going to wait for them to align and to, and to give it the okay to take a short trade in the direction of these two variables, independent variables, I should say. Again, just another example, order flow and momentum don't align here. They finally do align, and the auto is going to look for a long trade. Now, it's very important that the auto, the auto trader will only take a trade when there's a multi-time frame alignment and trend. And that, I think, is one of the most powerful independent variables. And there are a lot of formulas out there to show that independent variables do not necessarily have to be equal in power. They're called nonlinear independent variables. And the auto trader weights this heavily. It waits for the two higher time frames. Since this is a five range, it waits for the eight range and the 13 range to be in a downtrend. And the downtrend is defined by the auto trader as the 50 period moving average sloping to the downside, and it turns red, the 15 period sloping to the downside, and it turns red and the 15 crosses the 50 to the downside. And all support to the downside is broken. When that occurs, the background bias of your trading chart goes pink and the auto trader is now active to take a trade in the direction of the background color. In this particular case, the color is pink so it's clearly only going to be looking for a short trade. Now, I haven't talked about entries. Everything that I've said so far has simply been talking about market direction. So now we have order flow. We have momentum all on a multi-time frame basis. And we have the, the direction of trend or the trend aligned on a multi-time frame basis. This is a very, very powerful independent variable because this doesn't happen that often and this only happens when the institutional traders create a multi-time frame downtrend this is when when you see the application of a lot of money be, being applied to your financial instrument now here's the same thing this is actually the e-mini aligned to the upside on multiple time frames it's not a smooth move up you can see here but the only direction you can trade is up. And that's what the auto trader knows. It's never going to take a counter trend trade or try to take a short trade when you have background bias green. And it's only going to trade on these two colors, pink and green. Here, the 50 is green. And sloping up, the 15 is green and sloping up. The 15's cross the 50 to the upside. And price is above the 15 and the 50 with no upside resistance to get in its way. Now we look at correlative markets. And correlative markets are what tells the algorithmic auto trader the direction of money flow. Now you can see right here, you've got NASDAQ, E-mini, also, also almost very likely the Dow and the Russell all heading down. And all that takes place in the course of a given day 
is that the amount of money in the market is essentially fixed. And what the big institutional guys do is they rotate their money from asset class to asset class. They don't pull it off the table and put it in the bank. They simply rotate it around. So in this particular case, they've decided that it is a risk-off situation. So they're going to take the money that they had in stocks and they're going to move it. They're going to move them into safer investment vehicles. They're going to put them into treasury bonds and treasury notes, which have which inversely correlate with the with the direction of E mini Nasdaq Russell and um, and Dow. And they're also going to put them in certain currencies, and they're going to put them in certain precious metals. Now, when all of these markets correlate in the direction that they should, given our analysis, then we know that there's a true sector rotation of money. Now, if you look at bonds, when the lines are green, green, it means that money is flowing into bonds and price rises, and price rises here. Now, these lines are not even looking at the bond market. They're looking at bonds correlative markets. And the reason we call them quant lines is because the algorithmic auto trader weights them on a quantitative basis based on a house Strictly, they correlate with bonds. If they move up in the direction that bonds move up, closer to 90% of the time, they're quantitatively weighted greater. If they move up 70% of the time, they're weighted less. If they move up 60% of the time, they're not in this line because the correlation coefficient has to be 0.7 or greater. Now, when correlative markets don't align and demonstrate to you that there's no sector rotation of money and they're yellow and yellow. You can see, excuse me one second. Uh, you can see that the markets move and chop. So that this is when the auto trader is going to stand aside. Here's another example. This is when the correlative markets are all aligned to the upside, telling you that money is flowing into the E-mini markets and the E-mini markets are almost always going to rise. Now you're going to see how when you start putting this together, when there's money flow into the E-mini, you get the multi-time frame alignment on the E-mini, you're going to get momentum aligned to the upside on the E-mini, and you're going to get order flow aligned to the upside, and all of the, these independent variables fall into place. I'm just going to go through these quickly, and at the end, I'm going to show you a whole bunch of trades. Now, the auto trader really respects market profile. It's an extremely important independent variable uh, because it's really based in very, very sound math. Now, in a perfect world, the distribution of any set of data would be randomly distributed, and when it was randomly, randomly distributed, it would create this bell-shaped curve. Now, if you look at price versus time in any market, you would get the bell. And the price that was most often traded would be the median or the mean price. And the mean price in a bell-shaped curve is also the mode price and the median price. And one standard deviation's worth of volume creates a fair value area. And that's the area the traders want to keep the financial instrument in that they're trading. 
and here's our market profile. Now, when price approaches the value area high, the auto trader knows it, and it knows that it's the goal of the auto trade of, of the I'm sorry, the VAH, to push price down and create a strong area of resistance as price moves up into it. It also knows that the goal of the value area low is to push price up, so it creates a strong area of support price is trading down into it. It also knows that the point of control is that price that is most often traded in the course of the day and that, and that acts as a price magnet and it's a strong area of support and resistance but it's, it, but it, it's great to trade off of so you can trade off of any of these areas, and I'll show you these trades. We, the, the auto trader also has been programmed to see these low volume nodes. Now these low volume nodes are just the opposite of the point of control. These are areas where traders do not want to trade this instrument. They most commonly want to trade it at the point of control. I don't have the this histogram set to extend, but this is the big biggest bar in this histogram. These are some of the tiniest bars in the histogram. There were prices there they are where prices do not want to trade. So when price approaches them, they're also going to act as areas of resistance to the upside and support to the downside. And what they create are these zones of rejection, we call them. That when price goes up, the auto trader knows it's trading up into resistance and will stand aside. When it trades to the downside, the auto trader knows it's trading into support and will censor a trade to the downside until support is broken. Now to give you an example, if this was an entry up into resistance, auto trader would stand aside. Up into resistance here, it would stand aside. It wouldn't trade into support, but then when support was broken and price came back to resistance, it would look for a trade to the downside if everything else was working in its favor. When we're, we're, right now we're looking at each independent variable one at a time. Now here is just order flow. Now these are not auto trader entries, but it shows why you have to trade in the appropriate direction and why there's such, the auto trader trades with such tremendous specificity. When order flow is aligned to the downside, the only thing you can do is go short and you trade off of resistance down to support. And then when order flow and momentum are aligned to the upside, you can trade off a of support long. And when you break support and you come back to resistance, you can only trade to the short side and you have to exit the trade at support. And then you look for the for order flow and momentum to turn to give you a long trade off support. If you try to do anything else, what you're looking at is a high risk trade and it's the goal of the auto to avoid risk. Now, it also leverages the commitment of traders inside a candle. Now you see this is the green background. Now, this is the um, uh, this is Sierra charts. And you see that the commitment of traders or the COT, which is also the point of control of the candle, is at the bottom. And the, you, you have the, bat, the black, bat, I'm sorry, the green background bias. So this gives the auto the signal to go long. Here, you would not, this is not an auto trader entry, because you don't have that pink background bias but you do have the commitment of traders and the, um, 
the point of control of this candle at the high and you have a double top. So here's a potential short trade that you could take on a discretionary basis, but you don't have an auto trader trade. But this is another independent variable that is assessed by the, by the algorithmic system. Here it is again, point and control pull back to support. And I've labeled this as the POC, but this is actually the value area low. Here's the value area high. This is the point of control. Now it does look at the VWAP. That's the value weighted average price. I'm sorry, volume weighted average price. And it's going to determine whether to stay in the trade or bail on the trade depending upon the position of the point of control or COT inside the candle. If it's at the bottom, it's going to let the trade go. If it's at the top, it's going to let it peter out and it's going to, and it's going to exit the trade. It's a smart system. It's going to try to keep you in the trade and milk it for as much money as it can get. Now, here's, here's another potential trade just to highlight the point of control or commitment to traders when it's at the bottom of the candle. This is on the E-mini, trading right off the 50 and off of a pivot, although it's trading up into resistance. It's the wrong background color. This is a trade that we can take in the trading room, but the auto is not going to trade on the cyan background color, only on the green. Now the cash metrics are additional um, indicators it looks at. Now the cash metrics are, are not 21 indices, they're 16, because we, we booted out five. And they're grouped in four groups into the Dow, the NASDAQ, the S&P 500, and the Russell. Each of them contain eight volume metrics and eight tick metrics. And these are the, a list of some of them that are, will be programmed into your instrument panel for you to collect the data you need in order to provide the cash metrics with the information. Now we have the only auto trader that leverages the direction of the cash markets when you're trading the futures markets. And if you ask yourself a question, if you want to take a long trade in the, on the NQ futures market, wouldn't it be a higher probability winning trade if the cash market was also moving in your direction? The problem is it's not enough just to look at the, at the, at the direction of the cash NASDAQ, because that would be real easy. We could just put up a line and look at the direction on a moving average. What you have to do is you have to look at the cash internals because they're really what predict uh, the, the direction of the futures market. So what we do, we look, we look at the ratio of up volume to down volume. This is all on a smooth 15 period moving average. We look at the ratio of advancing issues over declining issues. We look at the ratio of st stocks on the uptick versus stocks on the downtick. Then we hone it down into specific ETFs and do it all over again and into specific indices. The upper line is all the tick data, our eight tick metrics. The bottom line are eight volume metrics. For some reason, the tick data is fat, much faster than the volume data. Volume data tends to be slower and more stable, and the tick data tends to really um, move faster. Now, what we, the only thing the auto is going to do is trade the trend. It's not going to trade gaps, market open or reversals, but you can use the cash metrics to do all of those. And the only thing I'm going to look at are the trend trades. 
it doesn't counter trend trade, it doesn't trade market opens or trade gaps. Now, that is an auto trader signal for a long trade. But what I want to do is move this, because this is what we're experimenting with, and I want to move this too. Hold on. See, here's the NQ. Now, all we know here are the cash metrics are red, red. And on the NQ, you get a great short trade. Now, this is on a three-minute chart. Here's the E-mini on a long for nine and a quarter points. We haven't seen this kind of stability in a long time. When you get it, you can really get a great runner. And here's the E-mini market open, only this is not going to give you an, an algorithmic entry. I'm going to show you the algorithmic entries. Now, these are the entries that the algorithmic trader looks for. The first one is called the strategy entry, and it's a multi-time frame. It uses a multi-time frame to assess the signal. Now, when it fires, it's looking at market structure and price action. But all the other independent variables that I talked about have to work in order for the algo to create a short trade that's going to execute one tick below the close of this candle. Well, this is a smart signal for the, for the algorithmic system to look for. And here's another, here's one to the upside and one to the downside. And the algorithmic, and, and this entry is smart enough to know whether it wants to take the trade short or wants to take the trade long. And it's not going to take it off of an off, off oscillator divergence or an oscillator signal, MACD divergence, MACD crossover, Fibonacci resistance or Fibonacci support. It's going to take it off of the multi-time frame direction of momentum, order flow. Key is um, money direction based on the correlative markets and that multi-time frame alignment of trend which is really important. And we'll only take a long trade when the 15 is above the 50 on your trading chart and on your two higher time frames, or when the 15 is below the 50 on your trading chart and your two higher time frames. It's the only time you're going to get an algorithmic entry. The algorithmic doesn't look for a lot of trades. It just looks for a lot of winners. It looks for the ABC entry. Again, 50 down and 15 is down. The software creates the A anytime any two candles in continuity of the same color occur. By price action traders, they define this as a downtrend. This, these are two orange candles to the downside. The software prints an A. As long as you get continued down candles, the A just sits. And then what it looks for is a bunch of traders trying to trade the market in the counter trend direction, which is the kiss of death for these traders in the speed candle, because they're trading, likely to be trading against the flow of institutional money. They're obviously tr counter trend trading, and they're trading oscillator divergence, MACD divergence. They're trading off a of Fibonacci support, all the stuff that we know doesn't work. The auto trader sees the B and colors the candle magenta. And then you get a flashing C. It's going to execute the trade, but the entry short is going to be one tick below the close of the candle, which is set. Now, if the candle doesn't mature to the downside and close, the trade is then removed and taken out. And that happens with all the entries. Sometimes you'll get a strategy entry that will flicker intra-candle. But then instead of closing to the downside, the candle will reverse and close to the upside. Well, the auto trader will have triggered a trade short. 
what it does is it cancels the trade and takes it out. So it gets you into the trade early, but if the trade doesn't mature and get you that C candle engulfer and close you to the downside where it wants it to be, it takes the trade out and cancels the trade. And we have the auto in, the, in, in, a, in another office, and I can still hear it saying, you know, order orders taken, and, and then, you know, uh, trade canceled, trade canceled. Because if the, if, the, if the candle doesn't mature in the direction that the auto wants it to, it's going to take, it's going to take your trade out, to close you up. Here's another C, always leveraging the appropriate direction in the direction of the trend. And I don't have any of the other independent variables set up, but you, but you can see at, at least what we're looking at comports with what we want with what the auto trader is going to be thinking in terms of its logic. And here's another trick, these are another triggers, C long and C short, 50-15 red, 50-15 green, and that's got to be the case on your two higher time frames as well in order for this trade to trigger. And it's going to get you in one tick below the close, it's going to get you in quick, but then if it doesn't mature, it will take the trade out. Now, it ha also the third entry is a consolidation entry. Now, consolidation is a period of time where volatility drops and the power of the bulls equals the power of the bears. This is a long candle here. This is a doji. This is a short candle. Here's a long candle. Here's a short candle. Now, most traders and most systems can't trade out of consolidation until there's a break and they would trade the next candle out, which would leave them a candle behind on the trade. The algorithmic gets you in on the right candle, the candle that's going to break consolidation, because it's assessing your two higher time frames. And they will predict the break of consolidation before it will happen on your trading chart. These are great entries. And when they signal, and everything else is working, order flow, momentum, multi-time frame uh, trend is locked in. Order flow is moving in the direction of your trade. You can see how the likelihood of taking a loser is exceedingly low. Here's another trade out of consolidation. Now this is not, this is just to show you the indicator entry. This is not a trade the auto would take because the 15 is not above the 50 on the trade. And these are two potential auto trader triggers, long and short. But the 50, now the, the, it will take certain trades when the 50 is yellow, um, but not on the two higher time frames. Okay, I want to go through these. Here's a short trade. Money flow, order flow, momentum to the downside, background bias is pink, three and a quarter points. Oh, and this is not, a, not an algo, and I'm thinking I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the algo system, and I'm going to show it to you. This is just our discretionary system, and it works on anything. I mean, this is Apple. Um, now, to show you two testimonials. So these are guys who trade the system. They don't use the auto. And this is Jersey Tony, and he's been with us for almost three years. And he's a top. And the reason I put these in is these are top step traders. And 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 Jersey Tony makes a lot of money. I'm not going to read it to you. And D Moore is. Uh, won the, the, the 2016 Top Step Trader Games. He made more money in the $50,000 combine than anybody else. And he's one of our traders in the room every day. And he um, went 21 straight days without a loss. And let me show you. i got to cut and paste it if I can. Well, I can't. So just hang on one second. I'm going to come out because I want to show you the auto trader. Um, 
I want to show you its performance. And to do that, I have to open up my workspace. And I have to I have to go into my email. These are all my Benzinga alerts that I used for my um, options network, for my options trading. And let me just find it. Um, hold on one second here. I'm sorry. Uh, hold on. Here it is. Here it is. That's posted. Now we, we periodically we stop to tweak it. Let me we stopped here. And now we're in April. We stopped here in August. We stopped here for a long time um, to integrate a lot of those sophisticated metrics that I showed you. Um, the cash metrics and those additional indicators. And you can see just by keeping it up to date through 11.6 and by, by continually stopping and reassessing, we're up to $28,677.38 on a starting um, account of $5,000. And this is only trading a small number of contracts. Now, we've tweaked the markets. Um, and right, and we have a lot of bond trades here and a lot of uh, treasury note trades, and they're no longer present because they were not up to snuff for us. And they were dragging, they were putting a drag on the equity curve. So we eliminated them. And then we put the 6E in. And, and the 6E has done really well for us. So we're constantly improving it to push the equity curve higher, as high as we can. And probably after Christmas, we'll look and make a reassessment again to see if, we, if there's anything we can do to push it even higher. So let me go here. This is, a, this is, a, this is an entry today right here. Now, I know there's an auto trader trade on my trading chart when I get this huge X on the trading chart. That's a strategy entry. Here's the auto trader triggering a long entry right there. And this is on the 13 range NQ. And you can see that down below, this is order flow. This is momentum. Here's the assessment of the three met of the three quantitative lines we use to assess cash flow. And this is the these are the 16 internals taken um, on the cash markets. Everything was aligned to the upside. And this trade went eight and three quarter points on, on the market. Now, you can see the point of control of the candle. Uh oh, we just maxed out on, on the number of, uh, we're, we're, we're bumping attendees. Um, now, for a while, we had an entry here. I just saw it when I opened it. No, can't do it. So it's, that's a perfect 
entry. Now, it's the wrong background color, but what we do is we give the auto a little bit of play because there's so many independent variables present that if it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven here, it will allow the auto to take the trade on a cyan background. Now, it's also trading off the point of control, which the auto looks for. Those are, one of, are, are the, some of the most powerful trades off the POC. Those are the ones it looks for to take a trade. And eight and three quarter points is a big move on the NQ, especially today. Now, there is a trade on the ES. They're all identical to this. Now, sometimes I mean, we had one day this week, we had seven winners and seven trades. In some days, we don't get any trades. Now, we're still trying, we're well, still maxing out here. There's order flow and momentum. There's the direction of money flow. I can't stop this from happening, I'm sorry. And there are the, these, those 16 metrics. So we know, with the, almost beyond a shadow of a doubt, that the E-mini on, on the cash markets are with us on the short trade, and it's looking at the entry out of consolidation to the downside. Now gold, there's a gold trade from today. I wanted to take, I want to give you trades from today. It's right here. Now, the algorithmic trader has certain discretionary properties, which is, which, which is what makes it so powerful. If it's got enough juice behind it, it'll trade into the value area low. And this is a perfect trade. Now there's no cash metrics because there's no cash equivalent for gold. But we've got one line that assesses money flow, not three. We've got order flow and momentum and we've got the appropriate color. Teal is the equivalent of cyan for the other, for the up co other color. So we've got a perfect trade. Now, if we look at the NQ, we can go all the way to the start of the chart. The NQ is without a doubt the toughest market. It's a killer market. Let's keep going. Now there's an entry right there. Now you already have a first target right here. No, oh, I'm sorry. There's no, there's no entry. I'm sorry. That's just a strategy, and, and the uh, the um, algorithmic is a huge X. But we have entries if we trade it. Whoops. If we trade it discretionarily. In the trading room, we have entries here, and we have entries here. Now, there's a couple of other. Um, let me show you. Let me show you one more entry. I don't know where it's coming, but it's gonna. We'll get one eventually. You know, it, it's not easy to get a, a, uh, an algorithmic trigger. We don't want to make it easy. We 
You see there's no background color here, so you're never going to get a signal. So we're a little bit of a snooze fest here. That's a great trade if you're in the trading room, but it just did not meet the algorithmic requirements for a trade. Let's move faster here. Hmm. Hmm. I don't see what I know they're here somewhere. These aren't these aren't still in the market. Let me try. Let me try gold. Let me go back to the end here. I don't know why they're not on. We should be seeing them. There we go. There's one right there. The big X. Now I didn't know. I don't know why we didn't have them on the NQ, but that's a trade for 37 ticks on the NQ. Now the goal of the of the auto is not to get every winner. The goal is to avoid every loser. And when you get it. It's almost, it's always a perfect entry. Now I just want to go over a few of the other independent variables that must be met before the auto trader can trigger a trade. One is this number, the MA diff, determines overbought, oversold. The distance between the 50 and the 15 on an eight range chart must be 21 ticks or less. On a 34, on a 13 range, it must be 34 ticks or less. On a five range, it must be 13 ticks or less. That's another absolute requirement for the auto to, uh, to fire. And I, and I want to give you all of those so you know exactly what we need for a trade to, to fire. Um, and what it also does is this, and I think this is very, very important. It's constantly measuring the average true range of your instrument. Let me put that, let me just put that in text. Average true range. The average true range is the volatility of the instrument. So 
if the volatility of gold at the particular time that it takes a trade, now the stop is fixed. On an eight range chart, you're always going to have a 10 tick stop. The stop is going to be one tick below the close of the low of a long candle and one tick above the high of a short candle. But how far can you go on this trade before you reach a third target and you're out? And how many contracts does it trade? And how much money can you make on a given entry? Now, the number of contracts it trades is up to you. You, if you want to trade 100 contracts, you can. When you initiate the system, we will program the number of contracts in for you. The, the signal comes from a server that's located in Chicago. So we get the signal at the same time that you get the signal. It doesn't come from our office here in Florida. So it gives everyone on the coast, east coast and west coast, an equal opportunity to get the trade, and it comes through fast, because remember, it's initiated almost at the start of the formation of this long candle. If, it, if, the, if the long candle doesn't mature, it just takes the trade out. But it initiates the trade really quickly. And it's going to set your targets based on how volatile, the, uh, how much the ATR is at the time of the trade. If the ATR is big, it's going to set your first, second, and third targets high. If the ATR is low, it's going to set your a more modest first, a more modest second, and it's on a more modest third. Now, the auto is automatically set to bring you to break even at first target, because our number one goal is, to, is capital preservation. Once your first target is filled, you're in the trade for free, and you want to bring your stop to break even and guarantee you're going to make nice money. So the worst you can do is come back and get stopped out. Once it starts moving past target one, it starts to trail the trade. And it's going to be dragging that stop up with it all the way. Now, if it goes through target three in a volatile market, you can make four or $500 on four contracts. If it, if it goes through target three in a very quiet market, you'll make $350 to $400. It's all set. I mean, I know that a lot of traders tell you that they want a two-to-one risk reward. They, they're going to demand from the market to give them a, a, a three-to-one or a two-to-one, but you can't do that. The stops and targets have to be based on the underlying volatility of the instrument. Now, obviously, the volatility accrued is a lot higher, and on, on gold is a lot higher than the volatility of the E-mini. So the E-mini is not going to make you as much money, nor do you have to risk as much money. So what it's going to do if you trade four contracts, it's going to take two out of target one, one out of target two, one out of target three, unless you want Sergio to configure it otherwise. If you want to trade two contracts, it'll take one out of target one and put the rest on a trailer so you can, you can actually take that last contract as far as you can until you get it down close. Now, the only other thing that I want to mention, then I'll, and then I'll take any questions, is this. When, let's say that this was an entry here. Now, it's not, but let's say that it was. You were going to go long here. And let's say the trader auto the, the price went up to here, which was not your first target. It missed your first target by say one tick. This is 
five ticks, let's say your first target was six. Now, the auto is going to take you out on this reversal candle. In this particular case, this isn't an entry, and, and, and I'm just giving you a hypothetical, but over 80% of the time, when you get a, re a, a short reversal candle on a long trade, or a long reversal on a short trade, the trade's going to fail. So what it does is, if it goes a, if it goes partially towards your target, it will then take you out, but only give you a partial loss. It's looking to mitigate your losses, so it's going to take it's going to close the trade. If your entry was here, one tick above the close, it's going to close you one tick below the reversal, and you're only going to take a four tick stop instead of a 10 tick stop. So it's really going to hold up you losing money. So that's the goal of the system, to get you in on a perfect entry that configures, that, that aligns with every single independent variable, set your targets as far out as possible or as close in as it needs to be to get all three of them for you on a statistical basis, minimize your losses, and, we, and the trader does take losers. I'm never, I would never tell you it, it takes 100% winners, but if the trade goes in your direction, just a few ticks, it's going to take you out with a much smaller loss than you would have normally if you took a full stop. So it's looking to maximize your losses and mi maximize your gains and minimize your losses. That's really the goal of this system. It's closing on $30,000 on an initial investment of five. And I just showed you the, the results. We're 28,677.38. And, and really, I think it's going to create the best equity curve now because we just engaged all of the additional variables that, that are required to take a trade. Now, some traders want more trades, but they just can't have them. They're, it's not going to work unless all of the independent variables align. Now, let me just bring my slides back for one second, then I'll answer any questions that there are. Let me bring it all the way down. Now, we're selling the system for $1,899 for one payment, or $999 of two payments a month apart. Now, we can only sell five, and the reason that is, is we have so many traders already on the system that we have enough who have dropped the system for one reason or another to open up five slots. And the reason we can only use five slots is remember that what we're doing is we're stuffing people in to one tick level. And if we over, if we place too many buy orders at a given tick level uh, on gold, on crude, especially the, uh, the NASDAQ, um, the E-mini doesn't seem to have a problem, then what we're going to do is we're going to wind up actually creating slippage. So we can only open it up to five to five traders, and that's it. If over the course of time, um, for one reason or another, I mean, we're making great money. It doesn't necessarily mean that people want to continue with it. They move, they, they, their circumstances change. Uh, and, and if they drop it, we'll have more positions open. But that's all we can offer um, today. And um, here's our phone number, and that's our uh, email, that's our uh, web address, and our um, uh, our email address, and let me see if there are any questions. Hang on one sec. Okay, there are a lot of them, so hang on there. Yes, I will record. We will. We will. We will have a recording. Yeah, Carl, you need Ninja Trader. 
because the trades come in through the control panel of your Ninja Trader, and that's where they're decoded, and that's where they're transferred to your trading chart. All you need to have up on your trading chart are on your charts are just a bare crude, a bare chart of the E mini, bare chart of gold, just a completely bare chart. You don't need anything else. All you need to have is the control panel that's operational. That's it. Nothing else. And we trade five markets. We trade uh, the E mini, we trade crude, we trade gold. We trade uh, the NASDAQ and we trade the 6E. Uh, those are the five markets that we've optimized. We drop bonds, we drop notes, and I don't see anything else that, that because bonds and notes were just, they were making money, but, but they, were, they, were, they, they just weren't good enough um, because it was a three range entry and what would happen was we would hit our target, but not everybody would get filled. So they're dropped and, and, and they have helped us out a lot. They may have been reversed, Tim. We were offline for about six weeks. You can start out only, Patrick, you can start out with one market. You have the ability to decide. Now the auto traders on 24-7. We, we, don't, we didn't want to leave it on 24-7, but we had so many traders complain to us that they wanted to let it trade all night, that it gonna, it's going to give you signals all night. But the, um, but the time that you take the trades and the number of markets you engage are totally up to you. If you want to just trade the NASDAQ, you just enable the NASDAQ chart. If you want to trade the E-mini, you just enable the E-mini. But we did a two-year analysis, and we had about a 75% win percentage for all the markets, which really shocked me. I thought we have, would have a couple that would way outperform the others, and the only ones that really didn't come up were, the, were, were, were bonds and notes, which we were eliminated. But you can, you can only trade one market if you want to. It's totally up to you. We recommend that you trade it from 9.30 in the morning, really actually from 7.30 in the morning, because you get some great trades early in the morning till about 12.30, 1 o'clock in the afternoon. We have traders who leave it on 24-7. And, and I'll tell you, yesterday, there were unbelievable trades in the morning. Um, so it, it's really, that's totally up to you. Yeah, Rick, that's no problem, Richard. If you start trading one or two contracts, oh, hang on one second. Oh, okay, one second here, because uh, they're going up. So you can trade, Patrick. You can trade one cot. You can trade one market. Billy, uh, on the the five thousand to the twenty eight thousand, it was between two and four contracts. Bonds and notes were two contracts. Um, gold and crude were four contracts. The E-mini was two contracts. So it was a variable number of contracts. Now we have everything set to four. So on average, you know, about two and a half to three contracts per trade, I would say. And Richard, if you want to change the number of contracts that you, that you trade, you just call us up and we'll reconfigure it for you. That will take Sergio 10 minutes, and he's, Sergio's here 10 hours a day. So that's not a problem. Um, we can make the adjustments short for you, and we can, we can, re we can re reconfigure that for you. It's very, very easy. The minimum account, Tony, all depends upon whether, if you want to trade, the one thing that you do not have to be concerned about is I have, in the last year, I've never seen the trader, auto trader, take two trades on the same, at the same time. Now, if you, if you have a $5,000 account and it, it's, in, it's in a four contract trade on gold, the worst that will happen to you is, is, is that the trade will bounce. That's all, it won't go through. Um, but you really only need to start with a $5,000 account, which is all that we started with. I mean, the auto trader doesn't really take a, a loser very often. 
and I, I can't remember the last time it's taken two in a row. So you can easily start with a $5,000 account. You need the five if you want to trade four contracts of gold and crude. If you want to trade two on gold and crude, you can trade less. It's all Eastern time, Patrick. You can start with a smaller account, Fred. You just have to be. Uh, you just have to trade fewer contracts. That's all. Five at five at the same time, H E. I mean, it's looking at gold, crude, six E, Nasdaq, and E mini. At the same time, it is looking for trades. And I, uh, you know, I hear them. Tr I hear them clicking. And I can see them on my trading chart. So, if there are any other questions, just you know, just send me an email or give me a call. Um, here's our phone number: seven eight six seven one three fifty two seventy six. It will make you money. Um, it and it, it's only going to take a perfect trade. And if it fails, you're going to see that there's just no follow through on a perfect entry which is absolutely nothing that can be done. It just doesn't fail often because you have it because you have so much going for you on the trade. Trading in a multi time frame direction with the direction of money um, and order flow and momentum. And your your trade configures appropriately with market profile. You, there's nothing more that you can do to guarantee, in, in my opinion, that a trade is going to be successful. So we configure the whole system for you so you have no worries about that. So if there are any other questions, just feel free to give me a call. And I'll be here all afternoon. Um, no matter what you do, I wish you the best of luck. We're the small guys in this market. Um, we we want to make money. Uh, from the from those from the big guys, we can't take money from institutional traders. The whole goal of the system is to put us in the direction of the institutional guys. That's really what we're looking for. We're looking for institutional participation, where they bring three time frames in alignment, order flow and momentum. Everything aligns because we know that institutional money is bringing is pushing price in, the, in one solid direction. And we want to get in on a small retracement and let the trade carry us up with, with the flow of institutional money. And we're looking to run over all the other guys who are counter trend trading, trading divergent signals, and trading other systems that are just not going to make the money. So have a really, really um, so have a great have a, have a great afternoon. And listen, I hope to see you. as part of it, I didn't put in here, and I'm sorry, I, you're also in the training room for three months. I forgot to put that on here. But you're going to be in the live training room for three months. So you're going to get to see the trades trigger live with me in the room. And you're also going to get to see me take all the trades. I almost always take the trade when the, when the auto trader is in. But you're going to see the discretionary trades I take, where maybe I leave one independent variable out, and I don't trade with as much specificity. So you're going to be in there for 90 days as part of this, and you're really going to understand our system and kind of be plugged into everybody. And you know we have a nice community of traders. We have 125 traders in the room, and you can chit chat and jabber and. Um, and go over your trades and uh, and go over your profit loss and it's a nice community. You don't have to trade alone. And you know, one of the toughest things about day trading is you're sitting in your house. Um, it's it's lonely. So let me know. Give me a call and I wish you all the best of luck. Have a wonderful, wonderful afternoon. Thank you all for giving me your time. Take care.